Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good to see you today. I think the rain has calmed down a little bit, um, but our, our farmers and our gardeners, I think you all have been, I have been, needing and wanting some rain. It's been awfully dry, so we planned an outdoor event, and so it rained. You're welcome. <laughs> That's my luck. Um, but thanks for being here today. Um, we are the Litchfield Area Cooperative Churches. Um, we've got folks from kind of around the area. Um, I'm Pastor Megan. I serve at Trinity over in Grove City. Um, also here today, we've got folks from Zion and Litchfield, First of Litchfield, um, Beckville Lutheran, First of Cosmos, and even Trinity of Hector now has joined the cooperative, um, which I think is really awesome. Um, what a cool opportunity to recognize that we are more than just our individual congregations, but we are the body of Christ um, in this whole area. We are connected to more people um, than even just our own congregations, and we're doing God's work together. So um, I'm really excited that we're getting to continue to work together um, into the future. I think that's great. Um, just a couple of announcements for the sake of um, your awareness and planning into the summer. We're going to continue this 830 service into the summer through the summer. Um, a number of our congregations are going to have um, 8.30 services um, primarily on Sundays. You're invited to come each Sunday. I know in the past we have kind of kept it smaller numbers, um, but things are opening up, things are moving in a good direction, so you're welcome to join your congregation or even another congregation. You can, you can go exploring this summer <laughs> and, and visit one another and, and worship together. So um, find, find the 8.30 services. Um, a couple of our congregations are going to continue having a later service, so um, if 8.30 is not great for you, um, if you're joining us online or if you're on the radio and maybe 8.30 is not um, the best time for you, um, join one of the other congregations that has a later service. Um, we won't bite, we promise. <laughs> Um, also, um, as of right now, our Wednesday services are on a bit of a pause, but we're going to try some fun new things this summer on Wednesdays. So keep an eye out for um, some holy hikes that are going to be happening. Um, hiking and um, singing and a little bit of scripture and fellowship time. And then we're also going to have some Wednesday night campfires over at the campground in Litchfield. Um, those will be later in July and in August. So keep your ears and your eyes out for some fun outdoor um, kind of relaxed and community-centered worship services coming up this summer. All right, um, anything that I've forgotten that we should announce here this morning? Anyone got something for the good of the group? Again, if you're joining us online or joining us on the radio, a warm welcome to you. We are coming to you today from the Litchfield um, uh, Meeker County Fairgrounds in the Man Shell, and um, Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. Almighty Creator and ever-living God, we worship your glory, eternal, three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith. Defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. comes from the Old Testament, the, the writings of Isaiah, chapter 6. Glory to you, O Lord. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings, with two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, 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 is the Lord of hosts, and the earth, the whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. And the seraph touched my mouth, and with it said, Now that it has touched your lips, your guilt is departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of, saying, of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here I am, send me. Praise to you, O Christ. I think we'll let the kids stay where they're at, just because it, it, it's looking comfortable, um, and not to put a couple on the spot. So I think one of the lessons that we have learned from COVID, or has certainly been reinforced in this past now, what, 15, 16, 17 months, is how much we need other people. Is that true? Has that been your experience? We've been isolated in our homes, we've been isolated in our work, We've been isolated from those we care about in so many ways. We've not been able to travel. We've not been able to go out to eat. All of those things in which we connect with each other. Well, as it turns out, we're not the only ones who have this need for relationship and community. Without getting too esoteric in theology, just to name the reality that many theologians through the ages have argued that God has the same need that we do. God has the need to be in relationship just as we do. I don't know if you've ever thought about that. Therefore, we have the Trinity. Now, I'm not going to try and explain the Trinity because it's not explainable. Other than to say it is part of God's need to be in relationship that there is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit all together. So that in eternity, God has known relationship just as God now knows relationship with us and perhaps with others. So we have experienced isolation, we've experienced the reality of not being connected, and are thankful now that some of those connections can be renewed. On this Trinity Sunday, it might be helpful to reflect that we're not the only ones, but God, God's self, also has that same need to be in relationship with God and with us. So we had a tech issue this morning out at the fairgrounds, and much of this message was lost. 
Hence this recording that's been inserted into the service. So we just heard this odd story from the book of Isaiah. Seraphs and hot coals on the lips, all of these odd sorts of things we would think of a contemporary story. But this is Isaiah's vision of his call. The context for Isaiah's call goes back to ancient Israel, and actually it's the time in which ancient Israel was divided into two kingdoms, the kingdom of Israel and the kingdom of Judah. Both kingdoms had had good rulers and poor rulers. This is a moment in which the rulers are not good, and God is looking for a prophet, for a one who would be God's voice to both of these nations. And God calls Isaiah, and the, son, and the ceremony for that call, or the moment of that call, is what we just heard from the reading a moment ago. The seraphs and the hot call all identify that Isaiah is now called to be God's presence, to be God's service, and in this case, specifically to be God's voice, to both of these nations, the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah. We also are called by God for service, for God's presence, and for God's service in the world. Now, most of us don't have an experience like Isaiah, where there's seraphs and there's hot coals and there's smoke in the rooms and all of those parts of the Isaiah story. For most of us, our call is in the moment of baptism when we receive that gift given to us by the Holy Spirit, in which we are called to be a part of God's family. We're also part, called to be God's presence in the world. We're also ca called to be God's service, servants in the world. And in fact, there is that moment, if you recall the baptism in um, if you recall the baptism service in which we say as pastors, let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That is that identification of call for us, again, to be God's presence, to be God's hands and feet in the world. Now, some are not called through baptism. They don't hear that moment of call in the sacrament of baptism. It might be through a conversation, it might be through a relationship, it might be through a story, it might be through artwork or music. Somehow that message, though, of call is given to each of us, baptism or in one of these other ways. So those are individual calls. Call of Isaiah, call of each of us as individuals, call to be God's presence, call to be God's hands and feet in the world. But there's also calls as a community. A great example of that is in the Old Testament and God's covenant with Abraham. Abraham was called to be the patriarch of a nation, the nation of Israel. And that nation was blessed to be a blessing. And through that blessing, they would be a blessing to all the world. So they're called to, to be a blessing and through that blessing that they will, as the nation of Israel, be a blessing, be God's presence, be God's hands and feet to all the world. We as Christians are also a part of communities that are called. And I think the language of Abraham and that covenant still fit us today. We as Christian communities are called to be a blessing to the world, where we are blessed to be a blessing to the world. We're called to be God's presence, God's hands and feet in the world as individuals, but also as communities. Now, I name this today because I think this is a pivotal moment in our call as individuals, but even more so as Christian community. How do we now live out that blessed to be a blessing in our world? You know, we've done it in the past through worship, through service in our community, our nation, and in our world. Those aren't going to change, but how we express those seem to be changing in our church. 
Many of us have noticed people don't fill the pews anymore. People don't come out for a service in the same ways that they have done in previous generations. That's our hint that things are changing. COVID has accentuated that um, in that the buildings have been empty this last year. The ministries have continued. Church has still been open. But those old ways of, or, or former ways, those ways from the past, the ways of, of previous generations in which we, we were God's presence in the world, we were God's hands and feet in the world, COVID has shown us again that those are changing. So this morning I lift this up simply as a recognition that how we live out our call, perhaps as individuals, certainly how we live out our calls as community, are changing. I don't have answers as to what those are going to look like in the future. Um, I'm not able to predict that future, but just to name and invite us all into conversation and discernment as to what that call community as community might look like as we go forward. The call to be God's presence, that call to be God's hands and feet in the world, that gift in which we are blessed to be a blessing to the world. So Isaiah's individual call to be a prophet, to be God's voice, um, with all of the stuff that happened in that moment in which we just read in Scripture, our call to do the same, um, to be God's presence, to be God's hands and feet in the world. We live that out in various ways, not necessarily as God's voice, as in Isaiah, through, through other means that we live that out as individuals, and then... How do we live out that call as community? As clearly it's changing for us as Christians. Um, how we are blessed to be a blessing and how we are God's, God's presence and God's hands and feet in the world. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, O oh God, for your holy church around the world. Revitalize and renew us, that we may be reborn once again through the waters of baptism and the blowing wind of your spirit. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedar and oak trees, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy, hear our We pray for the nations and for our leaders, that led by your spirit they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for any nations that are currently in turmoil. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially today for victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or any other mental health concerns. And we also pray for John Connolly, Brad Nelson, Missy Grimsgard, and Tanner Sunsala. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this worshiping community and for our gathered, cooperative worshiping community, that the splendor of your majesty and the holiness of your mystery may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O God, for those who have died in the faith, and we remember those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace.
And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us. Bless you now and forever. Thanks be to God.